So today we are going to learn about how to make crosses in wheat. First thing is I want you to ignore about the voiceover because this video was recorded in Nepalese and I'm voicing over this in English so it might look weird in some instances but let's just focus on technical aspect. So wheat is a self pollinated crop that means it has a male and female part in the same flower so that has high chances to self pollinate but we are doing crosses so we don't want that to happen. So first thing is we are removing the male part from the flower which is called the emasculation. So this is the wheat flower and it has a lot of spikelets and we are removing the bottom spikelets first they are not mature enough. We are cutting that with a scissor and uh, we are removing a floret from its spikelet. Uh, each spikelet has three florets and the center floret is not good for forming seed. They, are not, uh, they don't form the good seed so we are removing a center floret with the help of the forceps and we are leaving two uh, florets there for the pollination to happen. So we're just plucking them out. So we finished the one row uh, completely from top down to the top and uh, we go on the other side of the flower. So there are different ways to pollen do pollination. So very common way is to you just uh, emasculate the flower and bring the mature male plant that is pollinating and we just shed that pollen at the top of the emasculated flower and pollination happens. And the other option is to bring the male and female flower together at the same height and you have this emasculated female part and you have this pollinated male part and which is obviously at the top and with the pollen shapes at the bottom and the emasculated flower female blood and you allow the continuous pollination to happen. So that is the process that we are gonna show in this video. So after you do that, you just twist the part, not the plant, and do the same process of removing the center for it uh, from the other side of the spike lens. So now you also have to remove the, some of the top uh, spikelets at the top because they are also not mature enough. You just cut that top. And uh, now we are cutting those uh, florets in a two third. So the reason behind that is that, that will provide an easy path for pollen to uh, get inside the ovary and cause fertilization. So we are cutting those uh, two florets because we already removed the uh, third center one and uh, cutting those two florets and the two third of the scissor and after you finish the one side again you twist the part and uh, cut the florets on the other side as well. So now you have this emasculated uh, female flower ready. This is very ready to be emasculated. And now we are using, um, again, this forceps to remove the pollen out of the florets. So we have two florets there in, in each spikelet and the, each floret has three pollen, which you can, it's hard to see here because the camera is not in focus. But it, each floret has a three uh, pollen this is a one two three and you make sure you remove all three of them because if you leave any of the pollen there It's gonna cause cell pollination and that's not our goal. 
So from each uh, two floors, we get six uh, pollen and make sure everything's out. And uh, you do this, that pollen removal process in all of the floors and the whole spike. So after you are done with emasculation, you let that female plant to be matured more. Because I forgot to mention here, in the beginning of the emasculation, you select the female plant that is not mature or that has not already gone through the process of pollination. You make sure that which is uh, done based on the location, the flag leaf. The flag leaf is very, it should be very close to the spike. Uh, so your plant is not mature, the one you emasculate. So you let that set for a few days to mature. And also you put the glycine bag at the top of the spike so that you don't allow any kind of cross contamination. So after emasculation, uh, we are selecting a male plant. So we are selecting a male plant that is not very mature because uh, so this one is already pollinating, there probably already pollination happening, pollen shading, there may not be enough pollen uh, to pollinate the other female plant. Uh, this looks okay uh, and uh, you also look at the location of the flag leaf, uh, it should not be very down, it should be around the spike uh, and have enough pollen to pollinate the other female plant and also you have to adjust the height the male has to go at the top uh, so that it can shed the pollen the female has to go on the bottom so it can receive the shading pollen from the top male plant so we are doing we're going to do the cross here so this is the female plant we just uh, crossed a few days ago and we bagged with the glycine bag. Uh, so we let that sit for a few days, now it's mature, ready, ready to receive pollen. And this is the male plant, it's a bit, little bit in the topper position. We are just cutting the uh, arms, uh, not the spike lights or florid, just the arms so that it is uh, uh, it helps in the pollination and uh, the movement of pollen out of the flower. So we do that on the both sides of the spike. So after cleaning the, the male plant that is removing the arm, we are removing the glycine bag from the female emasculated plant and we are going to bring that two male and female uh, plant together in close contact and uh, so the height is the male is at the top it's going to share the pollen and the masculine the female flower will receive the pollen and pollen is going to happen and we put the, use the same glycine bag to to include both of the uh, spikes together and uh, and tie them together and you let that sit that for two weeks uh, in two weeks the whole um, pollination will be done uh, and you can separate the male and female flower and we just care about the emasculated female flower because that is the, the crossed uh, uh, seed will be there and uh, so the, the pollination happens more in the afternoon time so whenever uh, there's a lot of pollination happening sometimes you just come and just hit that bag so that it allows easy shedding of the pollen to the female plant. So yeah so we just care about the female uh, and the seeds will be set there after after a few weeks actually we just remove that separate them in two weeks and the next step is to tag them so we we tag them we write the, which is the male plant which is the female plant their sources and the date so that we know when we did make those crosses uh, and that helps to keep the record of all of the crosses we do here so after two weeks of crossing we separate male and female we just toss the male plant we don't keep them and only we allow emasculated female part that's been 
cross pollinate the male plant uh, to mature for two to three more weeks and harvest the seeds from the female plant because that is the cross seed from two different plants. Um, So we harvest the seeds from the female plant, like I said, we just cut the top with the scissor and bring them in the lab. So this is the matured, uh, crossed wheat seed from the female plant. And generally it's 15, 20 seeds um, per, per spike. Sometimes you get more also, it depends on uh, the frequency of the pollination. Uh, and. Uh, we just harvest them manually from, and we take seeds out and they are definitely dry situation and uh, we count them, keep a record how many seeds are formed uh, and after that we just put them in those uh, bags and definitely we need to keep track of what are the parents, the male and female sources and dates and, uh, and everything and that's how we do to crossing here and the seeds will go in the field and we will evaluate their economic performances, collect data on the disease, um, the different physiological data, yield uh, and, and many kind of information will be collected. 